Hi everyone, my name is Connor McDonald. Follow me on Twitter to find information about SQL and analytics in particular. And this is the next in our series of the KISS video series on analytics, keeping it simple with SQL. These are short two-minute sessions designed to help you solve real problems rather than just go over the syntax. In this session, we're going to talk about the ability to use analytic expressions as predicates. Now let's do a quick 10 second recap. In the last video, we introduced two new tables, the planets table, which contains the planets of the solar system, and the moons for those planets, and every planet has zero or more moons. This was the question we had from the previous video, and this is the answer we had, just to introduce a bit of the data. But in this lesson, we're looking at a new requirement. And that new requirement is, give me the three largest moons across the planets Earth, Mars, and Saturn. Now, before we tackle that, the moment we start talking about analytics as predicates, we have this potential ambiguity. Let's have a look at the three planets for this new requirement. We've got Earth, Mars, and Saturn. The kind of expression we're expecting to write to satisfy this requirement is something like this. Restrict the planets to Earth, Mars, and Saturn, and using our familiar row number analytic, restrict it to those who are ranked less than, well, effectively the top three. Now, the question is, which would we apply first? Should we restrict ourselves to just these three planets first and then apply the row number ranking? Or is this query really saying, go and get the top three rated moons and then see which planets they're in? Because if we were to do it that way, then in reality, Jupiter would be the dominant one. He's got the three biggest moons across the whole solar system. And so we'd actually get no rows once we restricted it back to Earth, Mars, and Saturn. So there's that ambiguity as to which we should do when we have an analytic in a predicate. Well, this is actually easily solved. We've applied some rules when it comes to using analytics as predicates. Number one is the where clause predicates are always applied first. So in our case, the planet names Mars, Saturn and Earth would always be applied first. And to make it even more clear, our analytic functions are then applied afterwards. And in that sense, when we say applied, it means they cannot be a predicate. So that expression we saw before is actually illegal. We can actually do that with a simple test in SQL+. If we try to do a query where we've actually got an analytic function as a predicate, we'll get an error. And the error is quite explicit. It says you are not allowed to put those kind of functions here. So how do we solve that? Well, we solve it using inline views. And these, you'll become very familiar with these if you're using analytic functions. So here is our initial query, which goes and gets the size rank of the radius, but it only restricts the planets in the where clause. It doesn't apply an analytic in the where clause. So we're restricting ourselves to Earth, Mars, and Saturn. Now that we have that size rank worked out as an expression, we can reference that size rank using an inline view and referring to it from the outside view. And there's our result. So you can see an inline view actually adds clarity. We calculate the an analytic first, and then we can reference it as a predicate in the surrounding view. Let's wrap up. As we've now discovered, an analytic expression cannot be a predicate. You have to evaluate the analytic expression first, put it inside an inline view, and then you can refer to the value of that expression with the surrounding view. You can run these scripts by yourself by clicking on the live SQL link below. In the next session, we'll finally get onto one of the new elements of the analytic syntax, the partition clause. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, to keep it simple with SQL. We'll see you all again soon.